We'll call the member for Lismore. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr Acting Speaker. I rise to uh, speak on the Children Legislation Amendment, Wood Inquiry Recommendations Bill 2009, and recognise that there is enormous community concern about the wellbeing of children in this state. And I do pay tribute to, and it's good to see the Minister in the in the chamber as well, but um, I also pay tribute to our shadow minister who delivered a, um, uh, who, rep who led for the opposition, but certainly gave a very detailed uh, speech with agreement in principle. The bill, uh, the, um, the bill seeks to amend various acts and other legislation in line with certain recommendations in the report of the Special Commission of Inquiry into Child Protection Services in New South Wales, known as the Wood Report. The bill amends the Children and Young Persons Care and Protection Act 1998 to raise the risk of the harm reporting threshold to significant. This aims to reduce the number of reports to the Director General of the Department of Community Services, commonly known as DOCS, unless the circumstances causing concern for the safety, welfare or well-being of a child are thought to be significant. The bill extends the circumstances for reporting to include a situation where a child is not receiving an education as required under the Education Act. It also, it also extends the circumstances to include a series of reports in addition to a single report. The bill authorises the exchange of information between certain agencies and the coordination of services provided, the, provided by these agencies. We all realise that there is an increasing demand on policing, docs, juvenile justice, health, Department of Education and, all, and other departments resulting from a social dis dysfunction from families. Such dysfunction is also having increased demands on other service agencies as well. Analysis of these issues often identify a common point client base to the majority of the human service agencies. That is, a dysfunctional family with issues such as domestic violence, drug and alcohol issues, mental health impacts on all human, this impacts on all human service agencies. Presently, there's no consistent frontline strategies which coordinate, which coordinate encompasses a coordinated approach to deal with these problems in a holistic manner. It is true at the moment that there are some pilot programs occur occurring across the state where human service agencies' representatives meet on a monthly basis. There has been some successes in these pilot programs. And I uh, must pay tribute to the superintendent of the Richmond Area Command, Superintendent Bruce Lyons, who has been a driving force in trying to pull these agencies together within the, um, within the Richmond Area Command. He's been a great supporter of this because you can often appreciate that an agency has a problem with a fa family through the week, Friday night they go home and then, then there's a problem with, brought to the attention of the police that night by neighbours and then when they find out when the agencies get together over the weekend it's been an ongoing problem all week. And uh, where it could have been probably, with agencies working together, it could have been nipped in the bud on day one. And that is, um, and I uh, pay, pay tribute to the people involved in the, in the uh, program at home, but um, Inspector Blue, uh, Bruce Lyons, he's certainly um, been a driving force and believes that this should be um, uh, a, a program used right across the state. The cost of each agency uh, going down their own way is placing increasing pressure on agency budgets. And, uh, but the main problem that's been experienced, and hopefully this bill is going to fix it up, is the privacy restrictions still, that still exist between key agencies which continue to inhibit flow of information and intelligence between agencies which restricts the opportunity to work effectively together. And I would hope that the, this bill, and maybe the Minister might answer that, uh, my concern in that regard. We need to implement a social justice team at a district level, we'll, we'll, which will comprise of representatives from each of the human service government agencies 
who can work together from the one office as a team day in, day out. These teams will be able to identify at-risk clients which are common to the agencies and develop and implement both tactical and strategic plans. These teams will provide a much greater cost-effective response to identify and address the issues of at-risk families and also provide a coordinated and functional response which will reduce the impact, the workload on government agencies. They will also provide better outcomes for families, particularly children at risk. I believe and uh, strongly believe that the resources required for these teams could be resourced out of the savings from the various agencies. As I paid, uh, mentioned earlier that uh, our Shadow Minister, a member for Goulburn, Prue Goward, um, uh, made a very comprehensive speech and uh, she, I just want to go back to a couple of comments that she did make in relation to um, uh, the observations she made about the work of NGOs and the opposition's concerns about that the great partnerships might never eventuate unless there is a capacity building in the NGOs and within DOCS. I am certain that the culture of DOCS needs to be changed to fit in with this brave new world and I am sure that that will not be easy. DOCS will spend ever increasing time managing contracts and that too demands capacity building. The NGOs in my electorate do a, a tremendous job and um, I don't think there's one of them that hasn't corresponded to me on, uh, with, with their concerns in, regard, in relation to the changes and they are really the unsung heroes for everything from family relationships and domestic violence and each and every member in this um, chamber would realise the work that they do within, within all the um, Within, within their electorates and the community. Um, I'm not sure how the um, government will ensure that these smaller and extremely valuable NGOs, which are scattered throughout the electorate and throughout the state, um, will make sure that they remain viable when faced with the additional pressure to be placed on them. And we must um, make sure that they certainly um, continue to do, uh, are in a position to continue to do their work. And as I said, um, there's been, I think, everything's been covered in this bill by all the speakers uh, before me and um, it is with pleasure that, uh, like all members on the opposition and the Shadow Minister indicated, that we will be um, not opposing this bill.